Hey guys, it's Matt. Um, lots of things to talk about today. I'll be back in a minute. In many cases, after a video, Bill will surprise us with a poster. Maybe somebody will, um, I don't know, let's just say put this in a little tube and, <laughs> and send it <laughs> to the Richardson Agency in San Francisco. Um, check it out. Bill, it's not Rich Bay Reach Around Agency. It's the Richardson Bay Regional Agency, the RBRA. And they do good work on your taxpayer dollar. Y'all best not be living on a boat out there, you hear? Uh, if you're living on a boat, per my last video, if you're living on a boat in Richardson Bay, uh, they'll be coming for you. But in a different way, they'll be coming for you. That's the point of Bill. We're here, it says, to lend a hand. Well, we wish that's all it was, Bill. We wish. And if anybody uh, is interested in maybe putting this in a tube and sending it to the Richardson Bay regional agency as far as we know we still have freedom of speech we can complain in this matter Well, if I put this topic in the title, I better get to it right away, and I will keep the tomfoolery and the kidding around to a minimum, because this is one of the strangest things I've ever said, and if anybody's new here and they don't have a track record with me or this channel, uh, they pretty much may write off everything I've said in the past, attributing it to a crazy man. I says, oh boy, I spent months at that channel, and look what this guy turned out to be. Uh, most of the old guard, as usual, I anticipate, may have similar experiences. Almost everything strange I've ever put out. Uh, the old guard says, well, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing things like that. But in this case, I, I don't know. Um, what did I, I may have put something in the title about seeing magenta. Here's the deal, guys. I have two alarm clocks in my room. I'll explain that some other time. One is an old-fashioned, you know, your basic from the 80s, 90s, just your red lettering. You know, your cheap $15 alarm clock with the red lights. I don't know if they're LCD or what. Um, and the other is more of a, it's old, but it's, it looks more sophisticated. It's a Timex. Um, it is not just the red letters. It's, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's more of a, um, a display that shows the date and the, but it's old, but it is a LCD crystal. I, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter, I guess. The point is, guys, this has been going on for several weeks. In a state between being fully awake and being fully asleep, um, it very, that vague state of, of just coming out of sleep or just entering sleep, and maybe I have mentioned this before per the other alarm clock, but I'll do them both now. I'm seeing magenta. Um, it is not, and, I'm, and I'm, it's, I know it's a state between being asleep and awake. I look at the alarm clock, and it is not red. Uh, it's clearly magenta as are whatever other lights are in the room that are red. There's a light on an old cordless phone. I have a landline that red, it's lights up red when, it, when it's in the charger. That's magenta, clearly magenta. Now, if I'm waking up and I completely come out of it, then it, it within two seconds, it returns to just red. Or if I go back to sleep, well, I'm not seeing anything. I go back to sleep. And I'm clearly conscious in this, in this vague two to three, four second period between going back to sleep or things are a little blurry, but I'm clearly conscious about observing the magenta again. And so much so I've said to myself, I need to be sure that is clearly magenta, not red. Um, and it is clearly magenta. This has been going on for, I don't know, just about a month or so. Now on the other alarm clock, there is no color. It's just a I don't know how to describe it. I probably should have taken a picture. But the point is, and I may have mentioned this in the past, in the, in the state between being awake and asleep, I see these incredible patterns, incredibly highly complex patterns. And then right before I go to sleep or just as I'm waking up, I, I, I blur my eyes a bit and I see it's not the same patterns. I, and I do remember, maybe I did talk about this in the past. It's not that someone may say, say Matt, you're seeing the grid behind the, the, techno the technology, how it was constructed in the factory. No, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of different intricate patterns uh, in this LCD display, which is a square. It's not just, you know, I, get, I should have taken pictures. Sorry, guys. But the point is just in that, in that space between being awake it's just about two seconds. 
And I've observed over, this is over many years, I observed hundreds of patterns. Zara's going to hit the mouse there. Hundreds of patterns in that, um, that alarm clock. And they're all black and white lines. And they're, but it's nothing, you know, I would even say to myself, how could I, it's so intricate, the pattern. How could I even do that if, if it's part of, Matt, you're dreaming, you're doing that. Well, we do create incredibly complex environments when we dream. More so, much more complicated and complex with details than if you were to say, if you were dreaming about being, uh, say, at a carnival somewhere. There are so many details I've noticed being somewhat lucid in my dreams that those details, even the way that the planks look in the boardwalk, and the, the details are, are hundreds of times more than what you could produce if somebody just said when you're awake, uh, close your eyes and imagine uh, you being at a carnival in the most detail possible. Well, you can't. I mean, you just, okay, there's a boardwalk and somebody selling cotton candy. There really is, you can't imagine the details, but when you're dreaming, uh, those details are uh, are created. And of course, there's all sorts of different theories in our community. What they're, you know, the dream world is an, is an alternate world uh, that, you know, or, or, um, or the astral. I mean, there's all sorts of different, where, where it is more real than it seems. Um, and the way I dream, I hope not. Because I used to, I told you 20 years ago, it was always about some horrible dream, some pack of dogs chasing me. Or um, recently, it's just nonsense. I mean, I hope there is no world that mimics my dream or no, no, um, no substance to it. It's just nonsense. Uh, get on a bus, sit down, person next to me hands me an ice cream cone, and the person runs off the bus, and then it stops, and I get out, and there's a, I mean, just go into a grocery store, and and then spill milk or I, it just it's just nonsense one bit of nonsense after another and I don't it's so nonsense I, I I have no interest whatsoever in trying to analyze or doing that that Freudian horse shit Freud and breaking down dreams Matt I, you you said you'd keep that sort of thing to a minimum that was that was awfully strange and people right now <laughs> think you're crazy well they already think I'm crazy so what's the difference it's it's mostly just old guard here anyway so. What's up with the, what, what is your opinion? I'll pause this and I mean, there's a lot more to talk about. See, in that, in that two second period between being awake and asleep, there's something to that. Um, it's a transition of sorts and it's very meaningful and, and we have a different level of perception. Seeing the magenta uh, on any light in the room that's red and it, there seems like there's three lights. What was the third? Well, the, the night light. I was a little night light for, for Zara. That's just white, so that doesn't turn magenta. Nothing white turns magenta. It's a red light. And it is not even, it's not like, well, Matt, you're just seeing it a little bit different. No, it's, it's different. It's clearly magenta. And, and then a, two seconds later, I'm fully awake. It's just red. There is no, you know, I, there is no opportunity to mistake it for magenta. And then the other alarm clock, just waking up. This just this incredible line pattern, all different every time. Anyway, I don't. I have no idea what that could be. I have no experience in this sort of thing. This is not my area of expertise. You know, Joe, who you know sent 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 us that email about his before life experience. Um, I will talk. He's given me a little bit more information about that. Uh, Tony chimed in on that as well. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later in another video. He would be more apt to, or, or many of you, to interpret what the heck is going on with me. It's not, I'm not scared of it, or I don't think I'm losing it or anything. It's just, it's just one more fascinating thing that this reality throws at us. It's, it's welcomed. The more weird things I can see between the awake state and the dream state, the better. It's, it's welcomed. It's, it's, um, this reality doesn't, doesn't, uh, it doesn't bore us, put it that way. We had a few drops of rain this morning. I hope it amounts to something, but I wanted to talk about this for about a week. Um, we haven't had a drop of rain uh, in Pennsylvania, and I think this has affected a lot of the Northeast, but again, I just don't watch news or pay attention to it. It's pushing two months uh, for any sort of any significant rain. It's over two months. Now, there, during for Pennsylvania at least, during Helene, 
well, central Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh may have gotten a decent rain, but Philadelphia during hill it was wet for over a week, but it was just this it was just this wet mist in the air. Um, it was remnants of Helene hung around forever, and there was no wind or any damage or anything like that. And, and everything was wet, but there was no real rain. Um, and so that was that was probably six excuse me six or seven weeks ago. And you know again it was wet, but so we're pushing we're pushing two months. And it's for six weeks, um, almost basically haven't had a cloud in the sky. I mean, it's very, very strange. It's not just there's no rain, there's no clouds. And the humidity meter, you know, I do have that in the living room. It's just pinned at the humidity level of Arizona or California. Um, It's, you know, again, um, this is not, I don't don't want to harp on this topic. I want to transition this into something else, but not thrilled about uh, here, you know, living basically in the woods uh, there's a road real close here, but other than that, it's all trees surrounded by tens of millions of, of dried leaves on the ground, you know, that act as tinder. I'm not real thrilled, so hopefully we can at least get a little bit of a wet down today to take away the, the you know, the, the forest fire risk. But anyway, the point is, so here's the point, not not the weather itself, guys, but of course, what do I do? Um, I, I blame not milk, you know, um, this weather is not normal. It's not. And then I, I find myself thinking, saying, am I blaming not milk for two, for everything? If I condition myself to blame not milk, excuse me, for everything that goes wrong or everything that I don't like or everything that's bad, condition myself to blame not milk. And then of course that you try to take that to the highest level of truth is, even if that's the case, um, to assess blame or to, to blame, oh, those, look what they're doing to the weather again. Look what they're doing. You, you, you try to always take it to that highest level of truth for your own part to the work, your own personal understanding, part to the worry about yourself activities. And the highest level says, even if it, they are doing something or messing with this or messing with that, to assign blame and to get angry at it is, is, not, um, is not the highest level. Um, the something that Cynthia Sue Larson uh, put in her her book that I just finished up about the Mandela effect, uh, a, a tribal elder said something like the highest evolution of a man or a woman is adaptable. Takes uh, any situation that comes, adapts to it, whether good or bad. Sees the good in it, no matter how bad it is. And, and this is, wasn't put exactly like this, but adapts to it. And doesn't complain, and and does it without complaint. I think was the why I, I paid attention to it. Whatever it may be, there's probably a bit of good in it. See to that, or latch onto that, and you know, however how bad it is, or even if the not milk really did it, do it do it without complaint. And now now that is the highest highest level, and that's the part to the work I've been doing over the last seven or eight weeks here. And again, it's not just no rain; it's 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 dry. It's been as dry as Arizona. I mean, again, and yes, on and off during the day for for three weeks, I'm I get freaked out about it because I'm thinking, you know, oh, there's earth. Do I smell fire? It's just, you know, it's just it it does bother me more than more than most people. Uh, this risk of forest fire and things like that. I, of course, I haven't done a stove test for a long time. Well, you know, a month or so. Um, I mean, all I want to do, all I want, you know, the, I, you want to complain, but this is part two of the work, this exercise. Yeah, I, for, I find the complaint brewing up in me all the time. With the complaint being, you know, I don't ask for much. You know, all I want to do this fall is go out back and stack bricks and stove test and unstack bricks and get a little rain and enjoy the beautiful colors on the trees. All I want to do is just go out back and literally st- all my, on my entire free time, stack bricks a thousand pounds and unstack a thousand pounds. That's all I want to do. I know that's strange, but I don't know if it's it's a mental release for me or whatever it is. Test this stove design. Test that stove design. So I don't, you know, I have think well, my my requests are extremely low in ter- in terms of what I'm shooting for. I don't need no emperor's package at Caesar's Palace. If somebody showed up uh, with a suitcase of cash, here's two hundred thousand dollars, Matt, and we have net jets waiting for you. You want to go to Paris for the week on us? I would say no, not not interested. I don't want that. Um, what I 
Like, so, so here's where the complaint comes from. You know, I don't ask for much. I can't even get a few days of rain so I can do my stove tests and I can enjoy this beautiful. I, I don't even get that. Oh, woe is me. You know, so that that's comes up constantly. And then I keep trying to do the part two of the work saying that is, that's a really, really bad attitude. You know, whatever that tribal elder said, we, we adjust, we see the good, we adapt, and whatever it is, we do it without complaint. And then I find myself, well, I'm conditioned to, to blame everything on not milk. You know, this, this weather has been so strange. Do I, do, I, do I see it as not milk? Blame it on not milk? It's, yeah, mostly I do. And I don't think it's just a knee-jerk reaction. This is just weird. Usually when you get huge shifts in temperature, it, it creates changes to the jet stream. It creates rain, you know, and the temperature's been going up and down m- m- way more up than it should be. Um, and the humidity can go up and down without clouds. That, that's another weird thing. I mean, the humidity, is, I said, like I said, has been pinned low. But sometimes I, I'll watch the humidity meter. It'll shoot up to 75%, 80% humidity and still crystal clear blue. It's like, so yes, so, but I'm trying, you know, this is part two of the work. Like, what are my tendencies? What am I doing here? Blame not, no, blame not, no. Even, well, Matt, it is not, no. Even if it is, the, the blaming and the focus on it, it's what it wants. Do you think just, what does your inner knowing tell you? Does it want me talking about doing a video just on the weather, blaming not, no? Does it want that? Of course it does. Well, that calls attention to it, Matt. Doesn't it want to operate in stealth mode and get away without being noticed? No, it wants to be noticed. No, that's it. Of course it wants to be noticed. So I've been trying. It's part two of the work. And it's. It, I've been trying to, as much as, um, even if even if not milk, you know, isn't doing this intentionally daily, it could be a, 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 a reaction, a you could say pendulum swinging back hard in the other direction based on Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene and, and name storm Debbie or whatever it was. You know, sometimes the earth to me is a living system, um, whether it has consciousness or what. I mean, I, I don't, you know, who knows what that means, a living system. But it is to me collectively, if you could back up far enough, it is a living system. So if not milk dabbled over here with Hurricane Milton, Helene, and dabbled in this, in Category 5, when it should have been this or that, does the Earth um, do a, a rubber band snapback? I mean, if you pull the pendulum this far, it's going to swing all the way up. Is, does the Earth itself do a, a snapback and go into super dry mode because of the hundreds, of, hundreds and hundreds of millions of gallons or billions of gallons that were dumped from Milton, Debbie, Helene, whatever. Maybe that was not milk. Is this a rubber band snapback from the earth itself as a living system? You know, it's all possible. So, you know, is it not milk or that? It doesn't matter. Um, Part two, the work, you know, your inner knowing will tell you what needs to be done. Adapt, roll with the punches, see the good, don't complain. That's easier, easier said than done. Let me mention this one more time so we never forget the guy's use of freedoming as a verb uh, regarding the last video where the Richardson Bay Reach Around Authority is kicking people off their houseboats in Richardson Bay just north of San Francisco. The guy uh, using on the fly freedoming as a verb. Maybe they've been doing it for a long time in San Francisco. It's new to me. But he says, uh, yeah, I was working a landscape job and I'm so I'm, like, I'm driving the highway back and I see these People living on boats down there, and they said there was, up until, say, five years ago, there was well over 200 boats. And he says, uh, they're freedoming pretty hard down there. And, and he says, I wanted to be a part of it. It sounded like in just a few weeks, he sold whatever he owned, and he bought a boat. And he, was, he said, I didn't know what I was getting into, and he immediately was a, was a part of it. But they're freedoming pretty hard down there. Anyway, I, I, well, just revisit it with that one last time. I don't want to forget that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. I want to use that for the rest of my life. Well, the presidential election is just a few days away on Tuesday. I saw one of the creepiest ads on television last night. I recorded it on my little camcorder here. I'm not going to show you the ad. I'll, 
I'll show it to you at free voice. I, there probably wouldn't be any copyright issue, but I'll just talk about it briefly now. I'll show it to you at some time. My my phone, Matt. What about your phone? My phone, my phone don't have those capabilities. I I stick to the old, the old flip phone. No apps. No apps can be put on my phone. Um, it's it was threatening. The the ad just showed a, the logo of the organization, the Pact or whatever that was sponsoring the ad, and it was a very subtle threat, and it said. Uh, the election is coming up November 5th, and it says, who you vote for will be kept private, but if you voted, will be very public, or something like that. It said something like, and then it went on to say something like, your friends and family or something will be able to see if you voted. It was a threat. So how many, how many hundreds of thousands of dummies got a little concerned? Oh, they can see if I voted? Well, I wasn't going to vote, but... The people at work can see if I voted, and I want to do what did it? What did it? What did you convert it to, Bill? Your sacred. It's your sacred French fries. It's your. That's from The Aviator, um, Catherine Hepburn. It's your sacred franchise. You must vote. Always reminding people how important it is. MTV's idiot slogan for 25 years: "Rock the vote" and all that nonsense. It's now. You know what it is to me? It's your sacred French fries. It's my sacred French fries. Instead of voting, I'm going to go to Wendy's or even McDonald's. You can eat their poison once a year and still be okay. Once a year, it's okay. Um, but um, it was threatening. It really was. Who you vote for is private, but if you voted, is public. You know, it said something like your friends will be able to see. And then you know how low of an incarnation, how totally fiddle and bends low you need to be, to be anybody that was concerned that, oh, People can see if I voted. I, I guess I, but I don't want to look bad. Could you, I, Matt? Well, they can see you haven't voted for. Well, yeah, okay, and and I want them to continue to see that I'll never vote, of course, in any 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 election at any level, for the rest of my life. Um, I'll hold that my energy back for myself. Thank you very much. Now, guys, with the election coming up in just a few days. Um, it's almost, of course, assured that the Not Nilk knows uh, who they're going to put in. Maybe Albert Pike knew who they were going to put in, and that goes back a long way. But as we've talked about it, it probably uh, the decision making is is closer to the actual date now because of all the technology and the AI modeling and the information they're taking in in real time. There's no reason for the Not Nilk to make plans. Uh, 10 years in advance anymore because it's information it collects up. It can adjust itself on the fly per its Whopper computer, etc. But at this point, come on, it knows who it's going to put in. And if, what if anybody's stumbling upon this video? This, you're, you're talking like there's not even going to be a vote. Yeah. Well, there is going to be a vote. But um, the, what, do they, what do they do? What do they do with the just throw them out. <laughs> anyway, no, they, they actually count them. They want to see what the people actually, um, see if the people chose what they chose. But anyway, if I could just, guys, if, if you could just give me a one minute, guys, uh, I want to speak to Not Nilk directly. Um, I want to speak to Not Nilk directly. If you could just, 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 just allow me to do this. Not Nilk, um, I still believe that you're going to put in Donald Trump because you can't resist the situation that's coming regarding the, um, let's just say, the sentencing on the 34 felonies. Not Nilk, if you are, you know, put this, pump this into your Whopper supercomputer. If it is uh, in you, in the cards that you're going to put in Kamala, um, you, you're losing all the potential um, controversy that, you know, that comes along with, with, with the Donald Trump character and creature. And think of the all that you could do with the sentencing coming up. We've, I just, guys, the, the election's coming up in just a few days. We have to do this. It's just too much fun. Have to do it one more time. Not Nilk. Here's what I suggest, Not Nilk. Um, feed this information into your Whopper computer. Take Kamala out. Put Donald, Donald Trump in. The sentencing then will be in three, about three weeks on his 34 felony counts. You get some judge that just changes their tune. And it looked like probation, but now it looks like there's going to be jail time. You bring that into the news cycle. And the, the, the there will be a month or two of jail for the 34 felony counts, and the jail term will start on the day of the inauguration. Come on, not Nilk, you can't resist. So instead of inauguration, placing their hand on the Satanic Bible, they actually need to take that Satanic Bible into a, a prison of sorts 
And it's right after he, just like Andy Dufresne was deloused, and then they put the hose on him and the delousing. Donald Trump is naked. De- he has all the delousing white powder all over them. I don't know if they do that anymore. Maybe they would just shaw shank and escape from Alcatraz. But he, he reaches his arm through the bars, covered in that white delousing stuff, naked, and he's sworn in from behind bars and does the first month or two of the presidency from behind bars, all, all of which he's trying to um, see if there's any legal way he can pardon himself. Now, come on, not milk. You can't. You, if, if Kamala gets in, all that you could do with the 34 felony accounts, every scenario you could put forth, uh, you lose that ability to suck up your louche. So, come on, man. I mean, what, what Kamala, you know, look, but no, nobody really hates her. You know, that, that's the thing. I mean, just when you had Trump versus Hillary, the other side, excuse me, was you weren't voting or people weren't voting for who they really liked. More people were voting against who they hated. And, you know, you have to be, of course, a left wing liberal lunatic to actually like and get excited about some some low life like Kamala Harris. But no, she doesn't she doesn't inspire the hate of Hillary, of Trump. So the not milk loses all that those opportunities for Lush if Kamala gets in. You know, there's going to be uh, the conservatives that fly the Trump flag welded into the back of pickup trucks. They're going to be upset. But for the most part, you know, Fox News watchers, they're not going to be happy. And they're going to be upset for an hour and then they're just going to go on. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. They don't hate Kamala like they hated Hillary. And um, this is another reason why I just can't imagine... Uh, they're not going to put Trump in. The amount of, oh, the amount of controversy uh, they could, unless they have, you know, there's things in Kamala's closet that we don't know about. But just, I, no matter what they pulled out regarding whatever, whatever they faked regarding her past, it couldn't nearly on the on the meter on the the level on the meter could never approach what the ire that Donald Trump uh, brings forth in hundreds of millions of people. I mean, just to say the name hate starts bubbling up in people that will call him the orange man. And I mean, I just, again, every once in a while, the not milk surprises us, guys. Every once in a while, it's not that uh, crystal clear. You know, it is evil genius. And an evil genius is not completely predictable. So it just seems obvious that Trump is going in for so many different reasons. But um, you never know. And in terms of what we know about uh, dark reality, I don't think it all gets flushed if Kamala goes in, just if our presidential um, election prediction was wrong. Is there anybody, I'll I'll ask in the comments, is there anybody that studies reality the way we do that thinks they're going to put Kamala in? Just don't see uh, what they get out of it. I wanted to, you know, take a quick look at what they're saying about the sentencing for Trump, just to see if there's any um, even more changes. Remember, the date's already been pushed back twice. If you're sentenced to a felony, see if the date gets pushed back twice. It says here, I mean, I don't even know what this means. It's 50-50 that Trump gets sentenced in November. So it's 50-50 that he, they could push it, push the sentencing date back again three times. 50-50, says Karen Friedman something, a former top official at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and CNN legal analyst, quote, if he loses the election, I think he gets sentenced. And I think he gets sentenced, in, and I think he gets sentenced to prison. No, no one, they always had been saying probation, not, n- not prison, but of 34 felony accounts, we've been saying, well, that would have to come with prison time. But from day one, they said, oh, he'll probably get a slap on the wrist. That doesn't make sense because it's a felony. See what happens if you get 34 felonies. And don't I get a slap on the wrist? Just, they would take you. They, by the way, what also is a reality breakdown to a degree is on the day you're convicted, the day you're found guilty, you don't just walk out of the courtroom or go campaign or go back to your house. If you're found guilty, they take you away immediately. You go off to prison. You're there within an hour. You don't go off in this, and whatever. I mean, the, the, even if the sentencing is uh, delayed a week or two, if you're found guilty, you, you're in handcuffs immediately. Sorry, I cut that off just to finish what is being said here. If he loses the election, I think he gets sentenced and he goes to prison. If he wins, I don't think this goes forward. What? 
A victory on election day, she added, is his get out of jail free card. Uh, how? I mean, okay, we for our entire lives. I mean, they're going to play. The, they're going to break down reality at every turn. They're going to confuse people at every turn. For our entire lives, we've heard that well, we're all held to the same laws, whether you're the president or whatever, or a corporate CEO, we're all held to the same standards. I, let me just, cont- I have no idea what it's going to say, guys. I won't go more than 45 seconds. For years, Trump's legal playbook has been to seek delays. Often he's been successful. And now his lawyers are sketching out several tactics to postpone his sentencing, how the courts handle these latch-disc efforts. But the uniqueness of this entire situation is beyond anything any founding father could have ever complicated. There is no uniqueness to the situation. If he's, he's found guilty, he'll be sentenced to those crimes. It should be that simple, right? I mean, it doesn't matter who he is. It's not unique. It's not... Okay. Um, see, this is another... Not milk, if you're listening. I mean, you, you have to put Trump in. I mean, you, you, you lose all this if you, if you put Kamala in. Um, unless they're going to... That's the one... I'll, I'll take one thing back, guys. If they put Kamala in... There's no doubt that he gets sentenced to jail to get that loose anger out of his supporters, the people that have welded the Trump flags and the American flags to the back of their pickup trucks with their shotgun racks. Um, they will sentence him to a decent prison amount, decent prison time. Maybe knowing that there's no way they can get decent, that's maybe making the story too ridiculous. Can they get decent prison time or say six months in jail for Trump if he if he's the president, they can't get that. Um, I think even the not milk knows that'd be pushing pushing too much, or be 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 trying to bite off too much. But if he's not the president and he's just a man being sentenced or an ex president being sentenced to thirty four felony accounts, they can do the six months, and maybe the the ability to put him in jail for a long time may only come if he's not president. So if Kamala goes in. I'm going to say the prediction is obvious. There's no doubt he gets prison time. And the not milk maybe is looking to collect up that louche in that way. I don't know. But it does change a little bit to what I've been saying. Uh, but though I've been saying, why not not milk? Go for the whole thing. Put Make Trump the president-elect and then do the, do the prison on top of that. If you really want, want your louche not milk, do that. All right, let me close with this topic um, just very, very briefly. I'm not sure how long this will go, but we'll get into it in more detail. uh, Maybe this Saturday on Midnight Reality, uh, maybe some other time. Joe did email me back regarding the email that I read to you via Midnight Reality about his experience or memory of the, uh, you could say, between lives or between incarnations and what he went through, what he experienced. So he did send me an email back to clarify. Overall, uh, Joe was not upset um, that I took a a little bit of a challenging tone to some of his email. Um, Again, a few commenters were uh, upset that I might have been a little hard on Joe. Uh, For those that that didn't see the video, Joe has memory of where he was between lives, between incarnations, like almost like what is in the movie Soul for Little 22, a, a processing center of sorts. And, um, you know, I, as I said, guys, I'm sorry some of you didn't like um, how much I challenged that email, but that is, that is my, my, for lack of better words, my job here is to not to just bow down with whatever comes in from people that I don't know. Um, it's to challenge. Um, but I just want to, he has a clarification in this email. I haven't read I've read through it very, very briefly. I need to I need to really absorb it in detail. But Tony ch- chimed in. You know, Tony, I've talked about several times. And uh, again, it's hard for me to talk about this, guys. This is not uh, anything I'm well versed in. Um, but he said, Tony said that what Joe experienced was uh, the astral, you know, the astral plane, um, similar to what Mark presents in the Forever Conscious research channel. This this area that's not far from here, I don't know how to talk about it, guys. It's not my thing. Um, it's not nearly, like Tony would say, it's not even close to a true afterlife or where you need to be or where your higher self is. You know, I've, I've called it, for lack of better words, like the green room. Um, it's, it's something where, you know, the darkness has a degree or some degree of control. 
where, you know, as Mark puts forth with his, um, you know, the testimonies on the after the NDEs and the ADs where the dark forces have a degree to wield the trick. But Tony said, basically said, um, he didn't, you know, give me too much, but he said, you know, I believe what, you know, what happened to Joe, you know, that that's, that's quite common. But that's not like, don't think that's the afterlife. Don't think that's like the final final. That's easily, Tony was like, that's nothing. That's like, there's an ocean. That's like one drop in the ocean. That's, you know, very close to here. I, I'm, you know, I'm putting it my own way. That's not a true afterlife. Um, a reprocessing center from the right spirit, you know, can be avoided, should be avoided, can be avoided. Um, you know, it really happened. He says, it, it probably really happened to Joe. But that's not, that's not the, that's not even, if there's a, is a if the marathon's 26 miles, that's like one foot away. That's, you know, the, that's the astral. So that's nothing. So, you know, well, you know, Mark at Forever Research, Consciousness, Consciousness Research would say, well, the astral, the astral trick, um, you know, that's just Matt that just supports that the astral trick is real. It probably is. I've said, um, it's very simple, my, my take at this point, and it's not changed, and it probably won't change. Uh, we've seen through the trick here, we're doing the work here, we'll be able to beat a trick there. It's the same, potentially the same aspect of not milk. We see through every aspect, we see through every bit of the trick here, as above, so below, it, we're going to see through it there. So we will, because we're doing the work now here, we'll be able to get to where we need to be. Whether there's a trick or not, by my heel, I care not. I'm prepared. Joe even said, like, we're, in one of his emails here, we're, we're much more, and even he, in terms of what he's been through uh, in his truth pursuit, he's, we's, he's more prepared. We're prepared if, this, if it exists. If I've said it might exist. If it does, by my heel, I care not. I've beaten the trick here. I'll beat it there, if it if it exists, as you will. I have said many times, and I'll keep reiterating that. If you just expect it and you dwell on tricks at death, I believe in some way you're helping to manifest it, because this reality stems in some way. It needs us. It doesn't it doesn't um, doesn't stand on its own. It needs us in some way. Perhaps that same part of the astral needs us. So I'm not going to focus on it for the rest of my life and manifest it. But uh, again, I guess I'm being repetitive, but Tony, but he's like, yeah, this, that was the astral. So he's like, so yeah, that, that happens to a lot of people. What Mark talks about, yeah, that happens to a lot of people. You know, like, like Tony would be like, that wouldn't, if, 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 if Tony, Tony found himself in that situation, like, well, be a joke to him, maybe a joke. <laughs> so it should be a joke to us, um, you know, and it, do I, in terms of spending the rest of our lives trying to f use like a, a Tibetan book of the dead guidebook, you know, that's, that's the wrong thing. Well, Matt, what do we do if the trick comes? What do we say? That's not the right mentality. What do we, the, the Tibetan book of the dead, that ridiculous nonsense that when the blue lights come, turn right. And then th these demons will come, but they're a manifestation of yourself. That's, see, the, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, there's truth there. These demons that come on day whatever, it's, it's probably also 40 days. Everything's 40 days. I think it's 40 days of the bardos. It's, these demons are a manifestation of yourself. Yeah, there is a truth drop. Everything, the tricks in the astral may be a manifestation of yourself. But to try to, try to go get a map will... Uh, you know, what do I say? What do I do? What, when do I turn right? That is not, abs I, I, you know, this I do know. That is not thinking to need something or need a, a way to get through the corn maze. No, Ab that's, that's a position of weakness. That's a position of, of having no power, um, frequency, energy. A trick might come. So, so what? By my heel, like I care not. Aren't you going to prepare? It's like a, I don't know, like a a a kick-ass martial artist, or a boxer, or it could be anything. A football team that just aren't you going to study the tapes of your opponent? And here's what they're going to throw a trick play at you. And so uh, no, I'm not going to study the tapes of my opponent. I'm better. 
I know I'm, I've got myself in the right mindset. I've done the training. It's um, it's just the truth drops are everywhere. Um, what does he say? Man on fire, Denzel Washington. What does he say to little Dakota Fanning in terms of here's a, here, here's how you beat the other uh, you know other swimmers and make make sure you do this exactly at the turn and no he just he just says going into it trained or untrained. She says trained. That's it. Trained or untrained. Confidence. Trained. I can win. Well, how she says, how do exactly do I win, Denzel Washington? And you don't. It, you're confident. Trained or are we in, or what we're doing in this life? Trained or untrained? Trained. That's it. I don't need any details. Don't need no Tibetan book of the. I'm, I've Rob sent it to me. Or maybe sent it to me as a joke. I'll, I'm. We'll go through it again sometime before I dispose of it. <laughs> down at the Goodwill. Look, it's hardback. I tried to cost Rob a lot of money. Rob, I need to keep it. We need to we need to make fun of it at least a few more times before Matt. And if you give it to somebody down at the Goodwill, they might take it and think it's real. And yeah, maybe I should, I should just keep it here. So to close, and I'll be very brief. I don't want this to, you know, this video did, certainly did not start as a midnight reality making fun of the the Richardson Bay Reach Around Authority. So we're not going to get too deep here. That's typically re reserved for Saturdays. But going into the moment of death, there's t there's two options, at least from a truth researcher perspective. Oh, how, how, what do I need to memorize to beat the trick? Uh, sh should I study the Tibetan Book of the Dead? What do I do if I see these lights? What do I do if I see these demons or these archons? How do I play it? What do I do? Where's my corn maze map? That's weakness. That's, as I've said, you know, no reason to reiterate. That's no power, weakness. That's a low being. A high being, trained or untrained, trained. I've beaten the trick in this life, I'll beat it there. So it's about frequency, vibration, confidence, residence. Um, if you don't know what that means, confidence. I've done enough. I've seen enough. Um, I, you know, Crom, Crom laughs at your four wins. I laugh at your, at your archon. If there's an archonic trick, I laugh at it. There's just may if there is a, a trick or a try West Penray's grid, you gotta, you just maybe if you just vibrate right through it, <laughs> maybe you just vibrate right through it. Trained, trained or untrained. There's no corn maze map with that. It's all about confidence and I've done the work there. I'm not doing not doing these material higher self aren't doing this anymore get us out of here not doing these material planes anymore not not doing these presidential election cycles anymore not going to come back and do it. this is if you don't want to so i've said it it's um not cool uh, to 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 say that you might want to do another incarnation i i don't want to i've thought about it detail i i don't i don't want, i've had enough of this and the the hemorrhoids that come i don't ever have that but you know the the the, the things that come with uh, the physical incarnation. No, I've had enough. And I'll be very clear, you know, that this is the end for me. But you have to, how many people go into the moment of death knowing it's up to them? You know, Tony said that the incarnation, you, for higher self, is extremely important. That collective decision, we've had enough of these games. I'm not doing it anymore. I've done this enough. I don't need to learn everything I'm going to learn. That's enough. Why? Because I said so. Everything here is up to us. Why is the entire reality works to put you in a position of powerlessness for a reason? Learned helplessness. It's all for, why is it constantly tricking you into that sort of mindset if, there, if you weren't in control or, or of everything? So, again, guys, I don't, I don't know how this channel stays going when it's literally everything gets back to the same half page. Um, maybe just... Well, I guess we, we have to thank things like the Richardson Bay Reach Around and, and making fun of not milk. It keeps us going, keeps us laughing. So we always go back to the same same few sentences, the same half page. I don't think it's going to change. I don't. Well, Matt, it'll change when you find Jesus and God. I don't, I, you know, I appreciate the Christians being here. I don't think that's going to happen for me. I don't think it's going to damn or doom me to hell either. Okay, I'm sorry. Why is it one size fits all? Maybe maybe you need Jesus. Why did, why is it assumed everybody needs Jesus? Maybe somebody needs Muhammad and Allah. Maybe somebody needs um, you know something else. Why is it one size fits all? Why is that assumed? One size it has to be everybody. Why? Maybe Jesus is your way out. Anyway, we'll do we'll do that some other time. A midnight reality. Thanks, guys.